Hello and welcome to Hibs Talk, the podcast where, funnily enough, we talk about Hibs. I'm your host as always, Gav, and make sure you subscribe to the podcast on either iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcast. Today's a bit of a different show. I was invited on to Rocksport Radio, so we're going to have the clip of that, of me talking to them about how good it's been with Heke the, the first few months of him in charge. Um, but before that, me and Dave go through the Hearts game and look ahead to the Rangers game, and also talk a bit, a bit about the news with the likes of Greg Dockett being linked and some other things. So... Yeah, um, enjoy the podcast. Apologies, it's been up a bit late this week. Uh, it really means a lot that people have been uh, pestering me to say where's the podcast been. It, it means we're doing something right. So, uh, again, apologies, it's late. Like I say, just busy week. Myself with exams, Dave with bowls and stuff. So we're back to normal service next week. So, anyway, get it. Let's get on with the show, folks. So joining me now is Dave. How you doing, Dave? I'm not too bad. Yourself? Yeah, I'm good. You got much on today? I'm working all day. Aye. You know this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just going to be studying all day anyway, so it's not like I've got much of an exciting day ahead of me. We're at the Working Together meeting on Monday. Let's start with that. What was your first impressions of Kieran? I know we're hoping to get him on the podcast soon, but... No, he seemed like a, seemed like a good guy. Um, just quickly introduced himself and kind of sat back and watched pretty much um, Tracy chair the meeting. Um, I think he has said that he is chairing the next one because I read his update on the bounce. Um, so it's good to see, good to see him posting an update of everything that he's been doing in the last month. Um, but it's still, still a bed and in process for him now, like so. Yeah, and I mean, I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of people have their opinions on the fanship role, but I think uh, it's fair to say that Frank done, you know, a good job in a lot of aspects, but one thing that was maybe something he could have worked on was his internet presence, and that's something that Kieran's already very active on, so that's good to see, so hopefully that'll take the the, way, uh, the work that load off uh, Tracy, and they can share it out a bit, and um, both be a bit more active on social media, so. No, it was a good meeting though, but anyway, let's get into more of the fun stuff, the football, so the derby on Sunday, unfortunately finished 1-1, fair to say that you know, we came away rightfully disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. I don't... For the first 20 minutes, we, we kind of let them come at us. We didn't start we at the tempo that we started against Celtic, which was a wee bit frustrating considering the crowd was behind behind us. Um, I, I, I just thought we let them come onto us a bit. But even though they were kind of coming on, I was still encouraging to see the likes of David Gray, McGregor and obviously Marciano off the back of last week performing well. I think Marciano made a good save. Somebody behind us shouted it was a camera save. And um, McGregor... Was that? Uh, Mulraney? Aye. Uh, I just kind of ran past <clears throat> about four years. Um, and then I... It was a good save, like. And McGregor, you know, especially the first half, sort of really dealt with um, I can't remember, uh, Uchi, I can't pronounce the, the first name, but um, yeah, and you know, Gray quite solid as well. Still really solid for the defence overall. Yeah, I thought McGregor dealt with Big Uchi pretty much the entire game, like fine. Uh, it was quite a good good battle to watch because the guy is massive. He might be pretty hopeless at football, but what he can do is chuck his cell about and be a nuisance. I know we started singing. Uh, you're just an SHIT Christian Naddy, but I think that's a bit unfair on the guy. He's definitely a talented footballer. Um, maybe not the best footballer, but he's clever with his strength and uses it well. And there's a reason he's, why he's been linked with the old firm and uh, some moves back to England and stuff. So, um, yeah, I think he's, I think he's hopeless, but um, <laughs> at, the, at the same time, nobody deserves to be called a, a shit Christian Naddy. I'm just going to say it. You're too cute. <laughs> imagine imagine spelling it. I'm surprised you actually could spell it right as well. <laughs> um, so uh, <clears throat> one of the best chances came towards the end of the first half. Malin had a free kick. Starting to think, what's he, why is he going to float it in? I think a couple of people shouted, shoot. Um, no, no point floating it in against you know such a big defence, and he didn't. He switched it over to Stevenson, and then I didn't know Stevenson had a shot like that in his locker. <laughs> that was an absolute pile driver, wasn't it? Ah, absolutely brilliant. And then it kind of the keeper fumbled it because it was a great shot. 
I think it was McNulty kind of got it to the byline and put it back across goal. And then, I mean, it was ruled offside, but how did McGregor miss for there? I don't know. That's what I was saying, though. I'm, like, I'm, I'm actually glad it went over the bar because if it had went in and we had went tonto for like a good three or four seconds and then, then it wasn't again and then that would have... Hearts fans would have had a, a good jolly out of that. So, quite <laughs> chuffed. Uh, in the second half, a bit more of a positive approach um, and then we make the breakthrough eventually with the goal. Horgan kind of good run down the right and puts the ball across, takes a slight deflection off Berra and goes in. Um, were you pleased with a more positive approach in the, at least the start of the second half? I just, that's what I wanted Horgan to do though, just run at them. Because um, they were on the back foot when we were pressing them. And that the whole of the second half, up until we scored, that's what it all was. It was much better. It was it was keeping them in. They weren't getting out at all. And how disappointing was it to see us start to time waste in like the seventy fifth minute at home when we've got a one 0 lead rather than go for it? That's what I mean. That's I, that's the thing that um, where I think that we went well completely wrong because the seventy fifth minute time wasting when you've been all over them Hearts weakest aspect of their team is is their attacking um, centre out so what they need to what they like to do is they like to get bodies forward um, and attack that's how they're always good at set pieces the much more bodies forward for them the better they're not very good at, like big out chain isolated quite a lot of the game but by us sitting off them and then time wasting and not continuing to press 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 and like just attack them, go for a second. We let them be like, right, we can come at a few men forward here, they're slowing the game down, they're, they're letting us have a pop back. Um, and I, that, I just didn't, I don't get that. I think that's where we went wrong. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And I mean, you know, Uchi took his goal well, it was a good strike, but too much space um, considering we were playing. So defensively, I think McGregor had kind of been drawn over to another danger, which left Uchi. Um, with the space, but I didn't, I didn't get me wrong. It was a scuffed ball across to him, but that, McC- that as soon as that McLean came on, I was like, "No, I want to see," because he's like well, at least got a bit of intelligence about him. He's one of those footballers that you know he. I could tell you can tell he wishes he had the brain he had now in his twenty three, twenty four year old body, because he's such a clever footballer now, and he uses that you know to play the game well, but. He obviously is physically quite slow and stuff, but if he had that brain in his, you know, body when he was, you know, ten years younger and stuff, he'd be a great player. Yeah, no, I agree. But now, very, very uh, clever player, um, and definitely a big change for Hearts, which you know helped them out massively, unfortunately. Um, but like we say, I think part of it was our own, like you said, Dave. Part of it was our own undoing, changing our style and starting to time waste and sit back and rather than go for the the killer second one so a bit of a disappointing uh, game to kind of come away from with only a point does that killer hopes for fourth spot obviously if we beat Kilmarnock then it's only one point in it but I do think that we're going to struggle now Um, I think it's a massive massive challenge to, to, to be able to hold that back we've only three games left and one of them is away at Ibrox which well, you know my feelings on that, but as much as I would want, like to three points, and that is going to be a tough game. Uh, they're on a good run now, so um, and come on, we've got Hearts, so they want <laughs> Hearts, want to, hearts to do us a favour. Like, uh, it's just really disappointing. That's the thing that I'm most disappointed about. There's not even that's what Heckenbottom said at the play of your time, too. It's like it's bothered about them, like Hearts and that is more about trying to get four spot and catch up. So, yeah, and uh, great to hear the manager speak that way. That you know, well, it's more two points dropped towards fourth spot, and the bigger picture is kind of always on his mind, which is good to see. Um, so I mean, you mentioned the Rangers game at Ibrox. Let's just kind of jump into that, and then we'll finish up with some of the news bits and stuff. Um, so Rangers two 0 win against Aberdeen. I've been a bit fortunate with two. Dubious penalties again to have a new uh, score in both of them, but you know how much of a danger are Rangers considering the form they're on? I mean, 
2 0 win against Aberdeen, 3 1 against Rangers, 3 0 against Motherwell, 3 0 against Hearts. So I said 3 1 against Rangers, 3 1 against Hearts, sorry, was uh, that one there. So I on a good run of form. They're scoring goals, they're not really conceding a lot. One, they've only conceded one in their last four, is it? Or is it more than that? I need to get them up. But yeah, I mean, what's your thoughts been on Rangers recently? I know you don't like to give them praise, but I uh, what's your thoughts been on Rangers? Ah, oh, they've been no bad. There, <laughs> <laughs> they have been. Um, I watched them against Hearts, and they absolutely steamrolled them in the first half. But I do think I do still think that there's there is something there. Like if they don't get early goals in that, the, I think the crowd got on their back um, off it quick, and there's like a mental block. Whereas you know they've no betters this season. No. Um, and they should have bet us nearly every single time we've played them. Especially the the eighth um Hecky's game against them. The eighth of yeah. March. Uh, first half they battled us, but again, second half we came right back into it. Um and we had a lot of opportunities and we could have nicked it. So it's a good time to get them, I think, because Heck and Bottoms had had this Right, a good spell in charge now that he knows what different teams can bring and hopefully we go there and like he, he said he's going to win obviously he's not going to say I'm going to go for a draw but you know what I mean like, I actually believe him when he says that Like, and I think we need to, if we're going to get four spot we need to go and we need to get we need to get something in the old firm game Morelos got sent off um, and received a four match ban that's now up and he's due to come back against Hibs. Defoe's kind of stepped in in his place. Um, maybe wasn't so prolific against Aberdeen, but has you know popped in a few goals. The whole team's been scoring goals. Arfield's been scoring more goals from midfield. Is there an argument, maybe from a Rangers point of view, that they're playing better as a team without Morelos, or do you think he'll come back in? Um, I think he'll come back straight back in, personally. He's only going to be there a couple more games. Um, I think he'll get sold on in the summer. Yeah, I can see that. I just think he'll come straight back in. And even if he does come straight back in, the best way to deal with him is just wind him up. Or take a turn each, give him a wee kick. So, like, just get him, just swap who's marking him. He has shot each, so the user will get an anti baller and then just wind him up. See if he has learned anything for his temperament. Put that to the test straight away. Yeah. I mean, I, my, my first thought was, well, this is his first game back after a four-match ban. Surely he's going to have learned something, but that was, what, his fifth red card of the season or something? So, yeah. aye, he's no learning. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I like to say that could be a way to kind of wind him up there and see if he has learned his lesson. So, I, I, what's, what's your thoughts for the game then in terms of Hibs? How should we kind of approach it? You've seen us we change the, the two up top against Hearts for the majority of the game. Um, and on, although that kind of changed later on, sorry, it changed at half time actually. Slivka coming on, and we've been playing the four five one with Camberi out on the left. How do you see Hibs setting up? I see it's just gone like four one, obviously Milligan sitting, and then pretty much the same lineup that started against Hearts. That's how I see us see us going. I don't see us going to up front. I think Camberi will be out left. Um, mm. but you'll be tempted to to put uh, Adjipong on for the start and just have him running at Tav because T- Tav going forward is brilliant so if he knows that he's got the pace of uh, Adjipong there then he maybe no commit as much and then if he does then we can catch him on the break and he's not the best defensively if you've got Adjipong running at him you know what I mean just brings back Stokes memories for the <laughs> final it's not a bad show um, we spoke about Morelos being a wind up uh, being able to wind up, get wound up and stuff. We've seen emotions from Canberry quite a bit recently, and Tav's quite a clever player like that. Could he try and get in the head of Canberry if Canberry's out against him on the left? Aye, well, Canberry's last two bookings have just been stupid. Um, I think he's just been frustrated in both games, and I, uh, the Scott Brown one, what they said last week, one of the most stupid bookings I've seen this season, and then. The one last week was just like a petulant kick when the ball was already away and it was pointless. He's due a goal, eh? Canberry. He's due a goal, but like, I definitely feel a wee bit sorry for him because he's no left winger. Yeah. Like, and he does still 
put a shift in. Um, but he looks like, I think sometimes the, his body language and that looks like he maybe, I think he looks annoyed that he's where he's playing rather than being like, look, I need to just do the best I can in this position. I think he looks like he doesn't want to play left wing. I'd agree with that. So, I, hope, I mean, it's just different. I like, the, the formation's been working. We've spoken about this a lot. The formation's working. How do we kind of fit them in and stuff? Um, so, uh, score predictions for the game? Yeah, I went, I went one each a couple of weeks ago. I'll probably stick with that. I think it'll be tough, but I'm just, I'm kind of hoping that we can keep up the fact that we're unbeaten against it in this season. Uh, and I, I'd love to sneak it. I think I went for a defeat. Um, in my predictions, but I'm going to change that. I'm going to go for two one hips. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Aye, aye. Uh, my predictions are learned for the top six. I went for a defeat, but nah. Um, I think yeah, the Celtic game kind of proved to me that nah, that this team can go unbeaten between now and the end of the season, even if it is scraping out a, a hard earned draw. Um, I think Craig said it on the podcast a few weeks ago. They just don't know how to get beat at the moment. It's brilliant to see. So, nah, I'm going to go two one. Um, bit of confidence. Uh, so, I mean, in terms of some news coming out of that, I mean, Rangers have jo- uh, signed that winger Jake Hasty, who's had a great season at Motherwell. But we're not, we're not going to talk about that. It's no Rangers talk. Uh, they've also got Davis to agree a one year deal, but. What another Rangers player that's kind of been in the news which kind of reflects us and I talk about this on uh, Rocksport Radio and which you'll hear in a sec um, Doherty been linked with us Dave what's your thoughts on that? Yeah that almost happened don't know where that's came from um, I think he's still got a few years left at Rangers and Rangers are not going to loan him out to us and um, obviously he's a, he's a decent player he's doing really well doing at Shrewsbury but Nah, not a chance. No, don't know where that's came from. That won't be happening. Nah, I think if Hibs are going to spend money on players, it won't be in that sort of yeah. area. So no, nah, I'd be surprised with that. Um, okay, that's the start of the that's the start of the stupid rumor. Well, aye, they're they're gonna. I don't. That one's kind of reached a few places, but um, aye, I can't. I don't know where that one's came from. That seems a really strange one. I'd be surprised if there's any truth in that. Um, but yeah, we're going to get loads of these between now and the transfer window closing in August, so um, I will have a few more of them to chat about, no doubt. Okay, um, I'll let you go, Dave, and get on off to work. Thank you very much for taking the time to phone and chat to me. No worries, mate. Right, uh, thanks again. Cheers. Good Cheers. Time, so, as I said, I was invited on to Rocksport Radio to talk about how good it feels with Hecky being at the wheel. Gavin, how you doing? I'm good, how are you guys doing? Great. Uh, listen, you must be reasonably pleased with this season because uh, there's been a, a wee bit of turmoil at Easter Road and you're now, league-wise, I think it's, what, 10 games unbeaten under Paul Hickenbottom? Yeah, 10 games now, which is brilliant. Um, really didn't expect that, you know, January time and stuff and I think we kind of thought it was going to be a transition season, maybe kind of bleeding a, a few of the youngsters and stuff and kind of, you know, build for next season. But no, I mean, I obviously only getting a point at the weekends, maybe hindered hope to fourth. But, you know, even then, you know, that's unbelievable that we're even able, able to talk about that uh, considering where we were in January. So, yeah, it's been it's been good. Gavin, when, when Lenny went, was it all starting to disintegrate a little bit? I mean, nobody knows definitively what happened, but there was all sorts of rumours about personality clashes and uh, players falling out of favour and a lot of disgruntlement in the dressing room. Uh, At the time when it happened, was any Hibs fan surprised or were you starting to see a slide, a decline? Um, I mean, we we did know that... um... Neil had taken time off from doing press conferences, but obviously it's, it's documented them um, and he's done a lot of work with uh, like his mental health and stuff and try to create a positive image around that. So we kind of just put it down to that and didn't really think of anything else. Um, but then, you know, so then people started to link that when it all came out about what was going to maybe happening and stuff. But at the end of the day, like, like you, you hit the nail on the head there, it was, it's all just rumours. And at the end of the day, the... Um, Lennon was a great manager for us. He got us promoted. He got us our highest ever points tally. 
Um, we've played some great football at times, especially towards the end of last season. You know, the January to the May was you know some of the best football I've seen at Hibs. With you know, obviously McGinn, McGeoch, and Scott Allen uh, linking up well. It was it was a brilliant time for a Hibs fan. So I'll I'll not bash Neil Lennon. And yeah, there's rumours about what might have happened and stuff. But no, nah, he was. Uh, He's, you know, I wish him all the best in his future. Just before, I, just, somewhere else. just before I bring in Ali Graham, because I'm sure he's got plenty mm-hmm. to ask you about, I, well, I, and I'll apologise for this, but it's true. Uh, were you and Hibs fans a wee bit like me when they heard the name Paul Heckenbottom? Did they kind of go, who? Yeah, we bet. Um, I had to kind of do my research, and <laughs> especially obviously for the podcast and stuff, kind of find out. And uh, and then it kind of looked like it was going to be Michael Appleton, so I started to do a lot of research on that. And I actually had a bit of work lined up and a guy ready to come on the podcast from England who uh, had, a, you know, quite a lot to say about him and stuff. And I was, I'd done a bit, a lot of this kind of work. And then that had to go out the window because that name disappeared and it was back to Heckenbottom and stuff. But um, I mean, obviously, it, it was kind of. He hadn't really got his chance at Leeds. Uh, he'd done well at Barnsley, so I kind of I went onto the Barnsley forums and asked some questions there to people, and all the Barnsley fans were saying positive things about him. So I think the fact that he's went from Barnsley to Leeds and they were still speaking so positively, you know, because a bit of rivalry there, um, that that kind of said uh, some good things. But obviously, it was you know a guy that we hadn't really heard of had. Failed at Leeds uh, in his most previous job and hadn't managed in Scotland before. So, yeah, there was a bit of hesitation, I think it's fair to say. Earlier on, Gavin, you mentioned a couple of players there. In fact, I think it was three, but I can't remember them. McGeer, McGinn. Scott you, Allen. Scott Allen. But we know it's, it's been well documented about Scott Allen and he should be playing a lot more football than what he's playing. But did you feel that at the time when, when, when these guys were moving on and, did, did, you know, did you, did you have a week and a worry for Hubs? Did you think, where are we going to get the players to come in and? Replace these guys. Yeah, I mean, um, I think there's been. Uh, it's, it was obviously you're never going to get somebody like Good Night Lennon said that a lot in his press conferences. You're never going to get people as good as those three players. Um, we're very fortunate to have them, but we had to kind of just sort of try and build again and do the, uh, people in different jobs. And I mean, it's obviously Milligan's had a couple of injuries and kind of went in and out the team, and then we, we lost them for a month for the. Uh, Asia Cup but he's back now and doing a good job in defensive midfield Malin's just one player of the yeah. the year quite rightfully so with um, you know assists in his goals um, both in the double figures and stuff so yeah I mean it's not been as good a midfield and I think there's been quite a transition of all period to kind of get to where we are just now uh, but I think you know with those two and then the likes of Omionga and Slivka uh, kind of coming in as well then we've got a, a really good midfield at the moment um, and hopefully we can Hold on to younger for next season. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you as well. Where, in your opinion, do you think that you know the priority for them to try and strengthen? Because obviously, the league position. Are you happy with the league position at the minute, considering where they were just after the kind of turmoil? I absolutely delighted uh, yeah. considering where we were, um, and um, I mean to be, you know, in in fifth place, uh, quite a few points ahead of Hearts now. Can we only a few games to go, so. We should be okay for fifth. I think if we'd held on for a win um, in the derby, which I think we deserve, we would maybe be looking at Kamanak and going, right, okay, we're coming for you now. I think, you know, Steve Clark's a good manager and I think they'll see it out, unfortunately. But, yeah, um, I think, you know, we can be quite pleased where we are. And in terms of priorities for next season, I mean, um, I mean, I, I think the defence seems quite... I settled at the moment. I'm even though even though they're getting a bit older. Um, but we've got Porches come back, Scott Allen come back, Boyle come back. They're all going to be like new signings. So I guess it's just sort of adding to that as well. Um, with hopefully somebody like McNulty or McNulty, if <laughs> if possible. What what does it mean for Hibs to get a player like Scott Allen back? I mean, you said that that you couldn't replace all three of them, but you're getting one of them back. Uh, and I know that the, the other two are, are, are not, you know, McGeoch and, and McGinn are elsewhere and there's no chance of them coming back to Easter Road. But Scott Allen coming back, how big a boost is that for, for Hibs? Uh, it's obviously brilliant for Hibs, but I mean, I think first thing, it's, it's, it's brilliant for him. He's, he's such a talented player and he's shown that on, you know, in, in his times at Hibs. But 
it's kind of just a shame to see such a talented footballer not getting to play football. Um, so I think it's great for him, first and foremost. But in terms of heads, yeah, um, I think it's great. And uh, I was speaking to um, Lucien Heckenbottom speaking at the Player of the Year and stuff. And I think it's when does when Scott Allen does come back, it's not going to be the same sort of. He's not going to get the same sort of role. I think he's going to have to work on his game and add other aspects and kind of have a bit more bite to his game. It's not going to be this. Luxury number 10 that fits in and just plays uh, through balls. I think there's going to have to be a bit of work on his part as well to kind of fit into the team and get his place in the team, which I, I was really, you know, hear a manager say, yeah, this is great, we've got this player coming in, but he's going to have to work his way in. It's great to hear and, um, that he wants to improve players. So, um, aye, but no, I like to say, brilliant to know he's coming back. What's the current situation, Gavin, with Mark McNulty? Is he, is he kind of made rumours or said that? He'd be really delighted to kind of play for Hibs again next year, or? Yeah, I think if he got his way, um, he, he'd he'd come back. He's uh, he just wants to be playing football. Yeah. But you know that um, Red and hold other cards. He's got another three years left in his deal there. He's uh, and see somebody. Know, see somebody that's excited you this season. Be coming in. Yeah, aye. I mean, um, kind of last last few games has kind of gone a bit quiet. Um, but at the end of the day, we're still winning, and, and he's putting in good performances mm-hmm. so um, you know his goal scoring has maybe dried up and obviously a bit frustrating missing the penalty but no he's, he's a really uh, excited player that kind of just sort of obviously being I think he was on the books at Hibs he's a Celtic fan he knows Scottish football he came to Livingston he understands the Scottish game so you know like yep. seeing it, even like his, his stuff after the game at, the, um, at Tencastle and stuff he just seems to get Scottish football and get Hibs um, so Aye, that's that's a really been really exciting to see him, and I'd love to get him in. But I think the ball's in Redden's court. I'm glad that Redden didn't get relegated because I think they would have mm. looked at him as a striker that could definitely score uh, goals in League One. But I think they've got their reservations of whether he can, whether he can score goals in the Championship or not. So that might come into his favour in terms of maybe get him on, on, on another uh, on another one. Sorry. Yeah. The other thing is it's been a, it's been a good year in terms of. Uh, uh, Hibs players on international duty and that always helps the club as well I know it kind of depletes things a wee bit if they come back injured or, or anything like that but it certainly gives the club and the fans I would think a wee bit of a lift when you start to see your players being recognised and, and playing for their countries Yeah, um, I mean I've, I've been quite fortunate I've, I've been able to, um, the club have allowed me to go Oh, the press conferences, and I was asking Heckenbottom about this, and he was sort of saying that it's it's been a uh, great and a hindrance at the same time because obviously a new manager coming in, if you've got the international break, that's going to be an extended period of time where you can work on new things and stuff and introduce new things. But then half of his players, you know, Slavka's away to Lithuania, McNulty was away to Scotland, um, a lot of the players were under under twenty one and stuff so he's not able to work on those new things but in terms of for the club it's great to see um, players get that international recognition and hopefully likes of McNulty can go well I've got a chance of getting in the Scotland squad if I'm up playing for Hibs in Scotland and that'll hopefully help him push through a meal uh, I move to come back also a couple of kind of unsung heroes well not really unsung but like David Gray and Darren McGregor have signed their, their contracts Gavin and it's like I mean, obviously you look at their age I think David Gray's actually getting better the older he gets. Every game I see him putting on a shift, he's, he's been incredible. But for Darren McGregor as well, where, and I believe this, I, I mean, Bill, I've had this discussion before, where I don't think Rangers should have got rid of Darren McGregor. But that's that's for another time. But um, he's been absolutely yeah. fantastic. But at his age, is that something, do you think, that maybe I've given him that contract to, to maybe go into coaching or maybe go and help maybe the younger teams as well? Yeah, I don't think it's... Because um, I was a bit worried when I first set heard four years, uh, I'm not going to lie, but I think um, there's there's been conversations. I don't think they've agreed on specifics, but there's a, I think they've talked about a, num- a couple of different roles they could do um, and they just want to keep them at the club because they get the, the, the mentality that they bring to the club is something that they don't want to lose. You know, I think um, if they could bottle it up and keep it, they would. So it's sort of like this is a kind of way of doing it. And whether it's mentorship or coaching or ambassador roles or you know yeah. youth development roles, or whatever, mm. I think they're keen to keep them on. And I think the kind of talks about what those specifics are will kind of come when they start going out the team. But at the moment, the three of them are um, are in the team, and you know Fortress is going to have a 
fight for his um, fight for his place with Hamlin and McGregor doing so well at centre back. Yeah, just even McGregor as well, Bill. You know when you you watch his performances, he's an eight out of ten all the time. I mean, he's he's. He tackles, he's organised. I like he David Gray, and I, yeah. you know, I have and to say, since he's come back in the team, yeah. I think he's he's made a huge difference. Absolutely. I mean, for somebody that was maybe he was struggling a wee bit with injury, went in any. I think he in, leads by example as a captain yeah. as well. Yeah, he puts everyone out on the park, but not only that, he's up and down the line, and he gets, he gets up the right hand side as far up the park as he can as well. So I've been delighted for him, and I think that the last few performances, Gavin, have been he's been. St- you know, throwing everything and, and and urging everybody and being the captain that I suppose, you know, that he's supposed to be. So, I mean, I think he's pretty much deserved, you know, the extension of his contract. Yeah, definitely deserved. And I think it was nice uh, when Leanne was up talking at the Player of the Year on Sunday night. She made a, a point of sort of saying, you know, when there was a bit of uncertainty about, you know, who our next manager was going to be and we are kind of going through that... Um, that, that, that period in January, David Gray really stepped up as a leader mm. um, and, you know, really sort of helped all the players kind of stick together and stuff. So um, I definitely got that um, captain's, you know, I don't know what the best term of it is, but he's definitely a brilliant captain, a brilliant leader for the club. So delighted that we've got him for another four years. What about, the, capacity, uh, yeah. what about the prospect of Greg Doherty? Greg Doherty himself insisting he's heading back to Ibrox stronger than ever uh, to kickstart his Rangers career. But of course, there has been talk that he may uh, he may be being looked at by Paul Heckenbottom. Well, I mean, um, I mean, I've not seen much of him this season. I'm not really seeing much of Shrewsbury, but um, you know, so when it was mentioned, I kind of looked into it, and I think he's in, uh, in terms of in all competitions, I think he's into double like, double figures for goals and assists this season, which, uh, you know, for midfield's great. Um, and I, I was always impressed when I see him in Hamilton and stuff, so definitely a really good player. Uh, but, I mean, his contract's until 2022, um, so I don't know, it's not what I can see Hibs kind of spending money on. Um, I may be wrong, and if, if I am wrong and Hibs bring him in, I'd be really interested to see what he could bring. And you know, like I say, goals from midfield is always great. But um, I can see him being um, heading back to Ibrox, like he says. I think that's the more likely destination for him. So, if I'm wrong, then you know we'll, we'll be getting a great player. Yeah, I, I can actually see that working, Bill. I can really see that working because if Scott Allen's playing again, where you know in your midfield, depending, but you 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 see them every week, eh, Gavin. So I mean, like, if he's going to play four in the midfield, or three or whatever, with be two wing backs. Scott Allen's going to probably be the guy that's spreading the passes and maybe sitting a wee bit deeper. Although he's not, but Greg Docker is a box to box midfielder who can get back, defend, cover, and spring attacks as well when your two wide men put the ball in the box. Because after all, Bill, that's the way Hibs have been playing. We attacking wingers, getting forward at pace, and you always need a guy from midfield that can break into the box and get in among the goals. So I can actually see that one happening. Um, Going back to Rangers, Gavin, I don't know if if Greg's the right place at the minute to get back into the Rangers team because Rangers are looking to strengthen again. And if you ask me if they were going after another couple of midfielders, then I don't think Greg's face would fit in there, Bill. So that's only my opinion. But I think somebody like Hibs, and I'm not I'm no disrespecting Hibs here. Do you think that they would sell yeah, him? No, no, no. Do you yeah. think they'd sell Greg Doherty, or do you think the Rangers would sell him, or do you think they'd put him back out on loan somewhere again? Maybe up a division I, I, in I, England I, or something? I just can't get my head around the whole situation. We had them sitting in a studio, you remember, before yeah, we had on Aggies, yeah, about yeah, to start. And, I can remember the. I can't remember if it was the cup final, the semi final against Celtic, where they fell out with a couple of guys, Morelos. But for, and I, I get back to that, and, and I look and I go, I don't think his face is fitting in that team. I don't know what's happening, you know. And then the next thing we know, he's away out and loan. So I don't know. I think if they got the right offer in for him, I think they would let him go. But as, as Gavin said, what kind of money could that be for Hibs, and would they pay that sort of a thing? So mm. um, I think that's the big, I think the big issue. Think if going to spend money. Yeah, I was going to say, if Hibs were going to spend money, I think it would be on somebody like McNulty or um, yeah, possibly like a... getting on my younger back or that. But yeah. um, I don't see us spending money on Greg Docky. If, if he came available for a loan, I think Hibs might look at it. But yeah. I don't know if that's a possibility. I think that's obviously down to Rangers. Who would you look at and who would you like to see as targets for Hibs for next season? Um, it's a difficult one. I mean, um, I think... I mean, we've been thinking David Gray's is Praise, praises, um, and I think part of the reason he had he has been injured in the past is because he, you know, goes flying into challenges. I don't think it's so much his <laughs> body; I think it's more the way he yeah. plays the game. Um, but I think, you know, 
uh, Whitaker's now 35 or something. Um, so I don't know if he's going to be adequate cover at right back. Uh, I'd maybe look to get something, some, somebody to push McGregor um, at right back. Uh, sorry, push uh, Gray at right back. Um, no. And then, yeah, I, I mean, a striker as well to kind of compete with Canberry up top. Yeah, see, I, I tend to agree with you. See, you know, and it's amazing when you look at the league table and you just don't think that there's there's going to be a couple of people who, a couple of teams, sorry, who are up in the top kind of four area, Bill, where for me, I think, and, and, and a lot of people don't like him, but I think he's, I think he's a bit of an athlete, the boy of Donald like Kilmarnock. I still think Hibs are one of the third or fourth biggest team in Scotland. So in my opinion, if they were to make an approach, don't forget he's in the Scotland squad as well, so that might be... You know, that might might hold him back because he might mm-hmm. ask for too much yeah. money. But for me, he's the type of guy, box to box, right back. He can play in at right side, centre half as well. Can I, you know, he can play a, a lot of different positions, Gavin. So somebody like that for him to, to, to try and oust David Gray out because, as Gavin said, I think there are a couple of challenges maybe to start the next season. And, you know, it takes a body, it takes longer to go over it. He needs somebody in there that's a wee bit younger and is going to be um, yeah. not down the line. So he would be the perfect fit for me. As for striker wise, I think if every single team's looking for a striker, as you know, it's just how much money you've got and how much money you're willing to spend. I was, <laughs> I was, uh, I was interested because you brought it up, but didn't tw- dwell on it. But of course, the the big thing as well for Hibs fans is the fact that you're above the Jambos. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and if you finish above them, I dare say any position's a good position. Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to base my season on where Hibs are finishing uh, compared to where Hearts finished. But yeah, I mean, it does definitely help, especially with like, bragging rights and things like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, um, especially considering where we were a few months ago uh, and how far behind we were, um, that'll be a, a brilliant achievement. So I'd be definitely delighted with that. And it'd be good to, you know, um, wind up some of my Hearts mates about that. Um, so, aye. What's your thoughts on next season in terms? What's the expectation levels uh, going to be for uh, for Hibs fans? Uh, it's going to be one that's going to have to be managed fairly fairly successfully by Paul Heckenbottom if he continues the run uh, that he's on just now. The expectation level will rise, but at the end of the day, you've got to be realistic about these things. So, wh- where do you think Hibs are, and where do you think Hibs should be? Uh, as a Hibs fan, uh, like I say, it's, it's going to be tough to kind of hinder my expectations because the thing I've been impressed the most with Heck and Bottom is if something's not working, he's not afraid to change it. Um, I think you know he doesn't have any go and go like, oh well, this is the way I, I've been working on my tactics all week. He, after thirty minutes, he'll change and put an extra man in midfield or you know like um, put two up top, whatever it is, and he might change it. So. Being able to like watch the manager, kind of see him watch the game and kind of make changes on what he sees, and it, it's been successful so far because you know like we were getting beat against St Johnston, we turned it round. Was another game we we're getting beat, we turned it round. The Livingston game it wasn't working, he turned it round and we won. The Rangers game first half was what probably the worst performance of the season, and second half was putting a good performance and got a point out of it. So, um, it, so kind of knowing how good a manager I think we've got. I'm trying to kind of not get carried away, but I'm definitely really excited about it to to see once he's kind of got a couple of other players in and once he's a full full preseason to kind of work on a couple of things and getting the likes of Boyle back, Borchus uh, back, bringing Scott Allen in. Um, I, I am really excited about next season and where we could potentially finish, hopefully a European place at the least. Does everybody else get excited, Gavin? I mean, obviously, at this time, you get the chairmen and everybody coming out and season t- trying to get sales. the season ticket sales up, you know. I mean, what was, you know, and it's amazing. I was saying to Bill earlier on, and you'll be able to maybe verify this a wee bit. I was looking at the Hearts and Hibs game, and I just watched a wee bit on the telly, and I seem to be, and I know there's season tickets and people, some people, seem to be a few empty seats. I mean, is, is not everybody convinced, or is this because they've got their season tickets and maybe no went to the game? Or are they buying into Higginbottom and are they going to you know, commit and force again next season? Um, I think the, the empty seats, because I mean, I, I did have a look, the, the, the empty seats were uh, season ticket holders, I haven't yeah. turned up, because there wasn't uh, seats available, but yeah. uh, there is an issue uh, behind uh, the, the goals and the famous five. I mean, I could talk about this for ages, it's, it's quite frustrating. I know I had to try to fix it. Well, that's um, the area I was actually pointing out, Gavin. Uh, you know, that was the area yeah, where I was looking at. 
there's a lot of issues there with um, you know because it's only a, a family section, so you right. can only buy uh, you have to buy with children and stuff, and then there's issues of you know like there'll be two seats bought and then there'll be one on its own and then two seats right. and then so that seat also kind of sits empty in that. So that's a bit of a frustrating issue to kind of you know it's hard to sell an adult and a kid together if yeah. you can't get the seats together. So um, I think they're looking to move people about um, in terms of next season and hopefully get that that area kind of sorted, but. Yeah, um, I d- people are definitely buying it. Buying it. Yeah, all the fans I've spoke to are really excited about next season. The season ticket sales are um, on par with last season, uh, when obviously we were talking about how good we were doing between mm-hmm. January and uh, May last year. So mm-hmm. now it's uh, really exciting for next season. So hopefully, um, hopefully I'm right in saying the um, majority of Hibs fans are really buying into this. So. What's, what's been the main uh, thing for you then since Lennon's took over for, for Heckenbottom? Uh, sorry, for Heckenbottom took over for Lennon. Is it the style of play? What, you know, you're saying is it the ability to change the game and things aren't you know going their way maybe 15, 20, 25 minutes? Did Neil Lennon do that? Or was it more exciting when Neil that because he had maybe a couple of the players that we'd mentioned earlier on that maybe Heckenbottom needs to try and get in? Um, I mean, one of the big differences is I think that there was more, I think, to play out from the back, uh, whether that's a managerial changer, because the main person that would done that through was Effie Ambrose, who uh, left in January. Yeah. So um, that's the one thing I've noticed. But like you say, the main, note that thing, um, the main note difference has been the change in um, tactics throughout the game. Lennon, you know, I'll, I'll obviously think a lot of Lennon's praises, but he would very much have, right, this is the way I'm setting up, and I have confidence that this can... Um, I can change this and if not then he's maybe can I speak about the players afterwards or speak to the players at half time and say no come on this is what I'm trying to get you to do whereas Heckenbottom will more read the game and make changes during the game whether it's in the, he doesn't care what minute it is uh, whether it's the 10th minute 30th minute or 70th minute he'll make changes um, to kind of uh, adapt to the game I've seen him play like three or four ma- formations in one game just in order to adapt so Mm. Um, that's the main difference I've kept noticing this. it's really positive to see Alright, listen Gavin, good luck for the rest of the season and uh, thank, thank you, you for coming on and talking to us tonight, it's good to hear no, uh, anything. From, from a Hibs man and uh, it's great to see Hibs doing so well uh, and I have to say, hold up my hands I did say who when Paul Heckingbottom was, yep. was appointed you weren't but the what, only one. <laughs> what a fantastic job he's done and more than that I love his style of football, I really do uh, so more power yep. to his elbow cheers mate, thanks for coming on tonight all the best Gav no problem. Thanks Cheers. for having me. No Enjoy worries. Bye bye. Cheers. Gavin Wilson from Hibs Talk Podcast talking to us tonight. Knows his stuff, knows his club, and always good to hear from uh, a Hibby uh, on the programme. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, folks. A bit of a different setup today. We'll be back to normal on Monday with the usual set uh, structure and with the video and all that sort of lovely stuff. We'll be looking back at the Rangers game and hopefully, if results go our way, a real important game against Kilmarnock to get, get closer to fourth or possibly even take fourth so here's hoping for that enjoy your weekend folks come on Habs and we'll speak to you Monday we're having a good time we're having a good night I got a tonic white on my mind yes I got it.